So why prep? Well, give me that. It's not yours. Uh, do you want to prep because you're going to have bad days? You know, it's point blank. You're you're gonna you're gonna have bad days. Hi, Jane. Uh, yes, buddy. Um, your car is not going to start. You're going to want jumper cables. Um, you know, hurricanes are going to come through. Uh, believe me, hurricanes are going to come through. I used to live in Florida. This show was actually conceived in Florida. Yes, Jane. Jane's a little bit demanding. Uh, you know, am I worried about civil unrest? Not too much, honestly. Um, September 11th, things like that. Yeah, that that's that's problematic. Um, 2014 World Series. Yeah, I'm looking at my phone because I had to look some of this stuff up. Um, but you're gonna have bad days, so you're gonna want to prep. And and kind of that leads into well, if I'm prepping, what do I prep for? Well, that's the part where you got to kind of take a good look at yourself and go, yeah, what's going on in my life? It could just be that you have a really crappy commute. So you want to keep a box of Snickers in your truck or your car or, you know, jumper cables for, you know, when that guy that you work with who never takes care of his vehicle can't jump his shit. Um, are you in college? You're going to want to prep for that. You're, you'll want to have a bag just of, you know, stuff to keep in your bag for study groups or, or uh, well, hell, get some lock picks. Because when people get locked out of their dorm rooms, they don't want to go to the RAs. Because that's, you know, it's either a mark on your freaking uh, housing account or they charge you. No, no. You go to the be like, hey, I, you know, case of beer or pizza. I'll get you in your room. Boom. No problem. That's that's why you prep. Um, so it's, it's about kind of looking in and going, well, I live in the city. Do I need, needs to be oil, do I need, you know, a letter opener like this, or do I need a bushcraft knife with a bright orange handle so I don't lose it when I drop it in the cake at Danielle's birthday party? Well, it doesn't matter because Danielle's not letting you cut the cake. Um, and she's going to see their name is misspelled on it, and then she's going to call up, you know, whatever grocery store you got the cake from and demand to talk to a manager. <laughs> so, you know what? Screw Danielle. She's going to get fired anyway because you know she's been skimming off of supplies. And understand, if your name's not Danielle, or if your name is Danielle and you work and you're skimming off of supplies, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about that other Danielle because she is just a real... Okay, so that's what you prep for. You prep for things going wrong. Things are going to go sideways, you know? Um, yeah. So, so okay, you, you get in your mind what you want to prep for. Well, what do I need? What's the best this? What's the best that? I got news for you. There's no best. There's best for you. There's best for your situation. But there's no best. Um... You know, if you live in a trailer, you're not going to have a ton of room. you you got to make space count as much as weight and cost and other things like that. Uh, on the flip side of that, you know, I live in northern Georgia now, uh, not far from Atlanta. My place has a basement. i got plenty of room to stow shit, and we're going to get into that because... Part of what AGS is, is I want you, the audience, to come with me as I get my ham radio license, as I get requalified for a first aid, CPR, um, you know, find out what first responder programs Georgia has. Um, you know, there, there's more aspects of prepping than just, oh, you know, I've got a gun and a bug out bag. Uh, we'll come back around to that. Um... So yeah, what do you need? Uh, do you need military gear? No. No, you really don't. I like going with military gear because I'm a large, you know, looking kind of guy. I can get away with it. Plus, where I'm at, I'm 
I'm out in the sticks here. You know, my next door neighbor is far enough away that I'm not worried about it. Um, but I also like to hunt. So I take that into consideration when I get things. Um, but like my everyday carry bag with the things that I have in it every day is this guy right here. It doesn't look, it's, it's produced by a company that produces military and police equipment, 511 Tactical. Um, but at a glance, it looks like a college backpack or just a regular hiking pack. You know, there's nothing, nothing big deal about it. And that's okay. You know, you, you kind of got to sit and go, what works for you or what works for me? Because uh, you may be five foot four and a buck 20 soaking wet. You're not going to want to carry a bag that weighs 20 pounds. That will get old quick. It, as I said, there are going to be things that will go wrong. And you'll have to rely on stuff. It is optimal if you can rely on your skill set and your knowledge, because then you can improvise the gear. You can fake it. You know, look at how homeless people survive. Look at how people below the poverty line survive. You know, when something breaks, they don't go and buy a new one. They fix it or they improvise it or they, they work around it. And that's kind of the mindset you want to start tackling is that how can I take what I have and either improve upon it or, or get it to be um, multi-use, multi-function. How can I make it last? How can I make it, uh, how can I make it better? How can I can, how can I use this tool to make my situation better? Into that, you know, that, that's kind of what, you know, segue into the, the types of gear you know, the gray man gear, like my backpack there, that just kind of blends in with the crowd versus military gear that, depending on where you're at, will set you apart from the crowd rather quickly. Um, military gear, if you're willing to do the legwork, you can oftentimes find it uh, used. You can, you know, find your local base, you know, because a lot of people live, eh, there's a reasonable amount of people that live near Isha base, or they know somebody who lives near a base. Um, and when people, uh, permanently change station, a lot of times they're just like, eh, yard sale, get it, get it rid of, I don't need this. I mean, my wife and I bought a really nice lawnmower off a guy who was changing station from McDill to somewhere else. We got a really nice auto drive lawnmower for like 40 bucks. This thing was nice. It was nice. It, it was a lawnmower. Yeah, whatever. Isolate what we got here. What is prepping? Pre <clears throat> yeah. Prepping is creating a knowledge base and a skill set base and uh, an infrastructure for yourself so that when things do go wrong, you're not totally freaking bored. Um, I mean, how many times has the power gone out? And you are driving yourself crazy because you can't get on YouTube. You know, you know, you've only got so much power left in your phone. If the network is down, well, you're definitely not getting on. Um, you got to think in terms of, well, okay, a hurricane's coming. You know, uh, what what resources might be scarce? Well, water, clean water, um, propane you know, for cooking, uh, boiling water to clean. And now that's not to say that you need to devolve all the way into bushcraft where you're, you know, you're doing the uh, bow drill or you're using the, the flint ferro, ferro rod striker, things like that. That, that, that comes later. That, that's, that's if you want to go down that path, if you want to set up that kind of bug out structure, if you want to, if you just want to learn those techniques, you can do it. Um, Bushcraft is this whole separate thing where you you fabricate everything you need while you're out there. So that's that's a whole different episode, and there are far better instructors than me. Um, so uh, to segue onto prepping, let's talk about what survival is. Survival is you actually you just got run off the road you're 
vehicle has gone into a lake and it's sinking. Guess what? It's survival time. Um, you know, if, big if, zombies, survival time. The mindset is very much different. Then it is just a matter of you beating the odds against you. It is, it is very much a the will to live, saying, yeah, screw this, no, I'm going to friggin' live. Uh, perfect example of that, back in the mid-80s, uh, down outside of Miami, there were a couple of bank robbers going around, and they shot this dude out, you know, in a Everglades hangout. They shot this dude multiple times, left him for dead. Uh, he drug himself like a mile to the nearest quick stop, um, because he wasn't going to just lay down and friggin' die. That's that survival mentality. Survival is, uh, usually, and I'm probably wrong about this, is usually I need to survive the next 24 hours or 36 hours, whatever. It is a moment that you need to get past. Um, so, you know, you survive an earthquake and then you continue to persist to live after that. You continue to try to improve your situation. You continue to try to, to, to move past that with, you know, your skill set, your mindset. Because um, earthquakes happen. Floods happen. Hurricanes happen. Shitty drivers happen. Shitty days happen. And if you're prepped, it will help you survive. Now, the other thing is, uh, if you want to take that a step further, there's homesteading, which is kind of where I'm going with, with my location right now, um, where, you know, I want to put in a sustainment garden of food and herbs and things like that. Um, you know, I want to put in a solar power system. I want to put in a water storage, water catchment system, because... Uh, my line of work, I can go for weeks without work, or I can be gone for weeks. You know, it's just, it's that sporadic for me. And when I'm not working, I don't want to have to panic. Am I going to be able to afford groceries? Oh, well, you could just go on food stamps. Or I could just line this shit up on my own and be self-sufficient and not draw off of, you know, resources that other people can if I can provide my own food, you know, if I can stock a freezer with deer meat or turkey or wild pig, that means I don't have to be on food assistance. Somebody who's in the city who needs it can be on it. You know, I'm, I'm all for people using the resources they need. And if they have resources like I have available or like I'm working to make available for myself, by all means, you got to use those resources. You got to kind of dig and see and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to stop there because we're, we're running pretty long and I'm yammering on. Um, next, uh, hey, don't mess with that. That's Jane again. Uh, next episode, we're going to kind of talk about a system and, and my interpretation of what a system for prepping is and for what a system uh, for for creating your own self-reliant lifestyle can be. Uh, so until then, um, Jane, what are you doing? My cat is crazy. Um, until then, um, I just gotta tell you what, until then, go get yourself something to drink. Have a nice afternoon. Spend some time kind of figuring out uh, what in your life you would like to make easier or what in life you would like to try to um, make sure you have a little extra security on. And I don't mean like, you know, oh, there's a burglar, I need a security system or a gun or something. I mean like, I've got an old car with, uh, you know, crappy electrics. Do you have jumper cables? Do you have spare lamps for your lights? Something to think about. Anyway, um, until next time, thanks for watching. Uh, if you get anything out of these, please 
Uh, comment down below. You know the drill. Comment, like, share, subscribe, uh, hit the bell, even though uh, my understanding it doesn't do much anymore. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the drill. Um, we'll be getting social media set up soon. And uh, from there, yeah, we'll go from there. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'd love to hear from you. As I said, drop a comment down below. Um, and I'll see you on episode two.